Hey guys, what's up? I've been away for two weeks, so as you can imagine, a lot of interesting things have happened during that time. Since some news is no longer very relevant, I decided that in this update I'll catch you up on the match results from the past two weeks. So, as usual, let's not waste any time. Let's go! I'll start with the latest results. The Japanese Volleyball League has already been treating its loyal fans to some exciting matches. A few strong foreign players have joined the league, making the competition even more intense and entertaining. Traditionally, in the Japanese Championship, teams play two matches over the weekend. The schedule for the first round was set up so that the opening and closing matches featured last year's finalists Suntory Sunbirds and Osaka Blue Tion. Without Slivka, the reigning champions couldn't put up a good fight against the newly revamped Blue Tion team in the first match and lost 0-3, 17-25, 19-25, 21-25. However, the rematch turned out to be much more intense. The teams battled through 5 sets, but once again the visitors came out on top. 25, 21, 19, 25, 25, 21, 21, 25 and 15, 12. Almost all the teams managed to score points in the opening weekend, except for Wolfdogs who didn't share any points with their opponents. Nimir's 49 points over 2 matches were a decisive factor in this matchup. The results of the first matches of the Japanese league are now on your screen. We can't make any solid conclusions after the first battles, but let's take a quick look at the standings anyway. In Russia, the first Legends Cup was held. Let me remind you that four teams made it to the final stage – Zenit Kazan, Belogory, Dynamo Moscow and Kuzbas. These were the teams that faced off in the semi-finals in Moscow. Despite the hype around the Zenit vs. Belogory clash, the match itself didn't turn out to be that thrilling. Kazan secured a confident victory in 4 sets. 18-25, 25-20, 25-17 and 25-21. In the second semi-final, Dynamo left no chance for Kuzbas, winning 2 sets in a row with a score of 25-16 and wrapping up the semi-finals with a 25-20 finish. Kemerovo also couldn't put up much of a fight against Belogory in the third place match, though they did score 6 more points than in the semi final. 25, 19, 25, 19, 25, 20. The bronze medal goes to Belgorod. The final match was much more exciting and colorful. In an intense battle, Dynamo, thanks to aggressive serving, managed to break Zenit Kazan's resistance in 4 sets and took home the first ever Legends Cup. 27, 25, 22, 25, 25, 13 and 27, 25. Kuzbas had a chance for revenge against Dynamo during a home game in the 7th round of the Russian Super League. With a 2-1 lead in sets, Kemerovo squandered a 20-17 advantage in the 4th set, which completely ruined their chances in the tiebreak. The final score? 25, 21, 20, 25, 34, 36, 26, 24 and 15-4. Dynamo adds another victory to their collection. The results of the 7th round of the Russian Super League are already on your screen. Only one match ended 3-0. Lokomotiv, with Lial in the starting lineup, crushed their toughest opponent from recent seasons, Fekel. Thanks to Moscow's point loss, Zenit Kazan climbed to the top of the standings with a game in hand. Now let's move on to Italy, where two rounds took place during my absence. The second round in particular was filled with excitement. First, Padova almost defeated Perugia at home. It took five sets for the reigning Italian champions to secure the win. 25, 23, 23, 25, 21, 25, 26, 24 and 15, 10. A similar result came from the battle between Verona and Cisterna, where a returning Kita scored 28 points helping the home team claim a hard-fought victory. 20-25, 25-18, 21-25, 25-14, 15-13. 7 out of 12 Italian Super League matches ended with a 3-0 scoreline. All the results of the second and third rounds are already on your screen. Piacenza, Trentino and Perugia are still undefeated, continuing to sit atop the standings of Italy's elite division. In Poland only one team remains unbeaten, 
Lublin led by Wilfredo Leon, who first stopped Skre's winning streak and then overcame Slepsk, extending their winning streak to six matches. Meanwhile, the reigning Polish champions, Jasiewski, after breaking Warsaw's winning streak, also saw their flawless run come to an end, losing 2 3 to Norwood away. 22 25, 25, 23, 25, 19, 21, 25, 10, 15. Thus, Project Warsaw, after two convincing wins over Elrond and Barkom, regained the lead in the Polish Championship. There were so many matches in the Plus Liga that we'll have to split the results into two parts. You can see all of this on your screens right now. As I mentioned earlier, Project Warsaw is currently in first place. Interestingly, Resovia, due to a tough schedule, is currently outside the playoff zone. Let's wrap up our quick news review with the Turkish Championship, where two rounds have already taken place during my absence. One of the main favorites for the upcoming season is Ziraat, who are determined to reclaim the championship title. In the first two rounds of the FLR League, Ziraat allowed their opponents to score over 20 points in only one set. In the others, they didn't even let them score more than 17. The results of the first two rounds of the Turkish Championship are now in front of you. Also on your screens is the standings table after the first matches of the new season. That's all the exciting volleyball news from the past two weeks. Starting next week, I'll be back to my regular weekly format. Live broadcasts of matches, some of which I comment on, are available in the VK group. The link is in the description. There, you'll also find replays of all matches and some cool volleyball videos. As always, this was Nick. Love what you do and you'll definitely succeed. See you soon, take care.